welcome to the midweek Bible study tonight. Would you all stand to your feet tonight? We're going to get ready to worship our Heavenly Father tonight. and uh, We just ask you to feel free. The altar is always open. And I just, again, want to thank everyone who attended Vacation Bible School, those that helped make it possible. Um, all of the volunteers, it was a wonderful, wonderful week. And I know many of you are tired, but now it's time to rest in the Lord and have a good time tonight. Hallelujah.
and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to ask every heart to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, it was at the cross, God. Knowing there, God, that you died for a wretch, God, like me. And we're so thankful tonight, God, that your grace and your mercy suited every one of our cases, God. We thank you for your loving kindness, God. We thank you for your tender mercy on tonight. We thank you, God, for gathering in this place, God. We ask that you will rule and reign in our hearts tonight, God. God, and as your woman of God, speak your word, God. We ask that you would anoint our fresh and anew tonight, God. God, that as she opened her mouth, God, that the spirit of the Lord will fall afresh in this place. That lives will be changed, God. God, that we will live holy before your presence, God. We thank you right now, God. We ask that this atmosphere will be conducive to miracles, signs, and wonders, God. For we stand in awe of your presence. We thank you for what you're going to do tonight, God. Bless every heart that came out. Bless every heart, God, that are listening, God, online, God. We thank you now for what you're going to do. And we say, do it for your glory. For truly, it's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. And every heart said, Amen. Amen. You may have your seat. Are you excited about being in the house of the Lord tonight? You ought to put those hands together then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Sunday is great, but how many know Wednesday night is too? Amen. Will we break the bread of life? Our broadcast is available online with Facebook and YouTube, so please share. we also like to just thank our online audience for joining us tonight. How you doing, sister? God bless you. That was an awesome song. Amen. There's plenty of ways that you can give if you cannot attend. You can give on our website at clcsandacross.com. You also can give on our Share Faith app. Our download instructions for Apple and Android are on our website and also on our Facebook page. You can also mail in your donation to Christian Fellowship Church, 7814 South NC Highway 58, Elm City, North Carolina, 27822. Again, we'd like to just thank you for your faithfulness. You can also give now by safely dropping your tithes and your offering in the usher's bucket at the rear. And also, if you want to, you can scan this QR code, and that's another giving feature that we have in place. Amen. 
We're asking all visitors, if we have any visitors, that you would go to the Connect Corner and fill out a visitor slip. We just want to give you a gift. We're not going to worry you. We ain't going to bug you. We just want to give you a gift. Is that all right? Amen. Monthly CFC event calendars are now available in the Connect Corner. So if you want to know going on this month, stop by the Connect Corner and they'll give you a calendar. Ladies and men fellowship lunches will return next month. So prepare your hearts for it. Big thanks going out to our leaders and our staff for the best, one of the best VBS. My God, it was off the chain. I don't know if you attended, but if you did, we had a glorious time in the Lord. And it was off the chain, Joe. I want to say you did a wonderful job, sis. We bless the Lord for those that helped us. That's right. Give it up. Amen. Amen. We're raising up our children in the Lord. Amen. If it's nothing else to hold our attention, Fusion is going to stay in here with us tonight. So we're going to release the King Kids and the Junior King Kids. Who do we have to thank tonight? Come on, y'all. Give it up for our teachers. Amen. We got a special treat tonight. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I've been waiting on this. To hear the woman of God again. This is her second. It's going to be her second time speaking. She gave a dynamite word last time she came up. And I'm looking forward to it. And I believe God has given her a word that's going to bless our lives. Are you ready to receive the word? Come on and stretch your hands toward the woman of God. Say, woman of God, just preach the word. Hallelujah. Come on, sister. Praise the Lord. God is so good. <laughs> and, you know, Vacation Bible School was awesome. We had a lot of great help. The volunteers, I mean, everything just went smoothly. And the kids had a great time. And some of us adults had a great time, too, going down the slide. And it was fun. So before um, we get started tonight, I just want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to have his way tonight. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for <laughs> this opportunity tonight, Lord, to be your mouthpiece, God. That your Holy Spirit would just speak through us tonight, Lord. Father, have your way, Father, in this service, God. And as, as we break the bread of life together, Lord, Father, that we would leave here changed for the better, Lord. That if there's anything that doesn't belong Lord, that it would just be burned off tonight. Lord, help us, Father, to lay those things down that that's keep us, Lord, from hearing your voice, Father. Because if there's something blocking us, Lord, just help us to get it out of the way tonight. Have your way, for it's in Jesus' precious name I do pray and ask. Amen. Amen. So the title that God gave me for this message tonight is Don't Stay Docked. That's the word he's given me tonight, so just bear with me as we go through this together. Um, I want, for one, to be a part of a ministry that's moving. I want the Holy Spirit to be moving through me. I don't just want to come into the house of the Lord and sit on the bench and say, I showed up, I'm here, I'm going to be faithful in my attendance, but just sit there and be a bench warmer. I don't want to be a bench warmer. I can remember back in the day um, playing some sports. I didn't play very many, but when I did, I didn't get to play very much because I didn't get picked very often. But God says, I choose you tonight. He doesn't want you to be a bench warmer, and he doesn't want you to stay still. He wants you to be moving. But we're going to talk a little bit tonight about things that can hinder us from hearing from God and things that can hold us back. We get stuck sometimes. And... I'm just one that God always uses the water, a boat, the ocean. That's just what stirs my soul. And I picture this as we're on a journey, okay, and we've got our boat in the water, but what are we waiting on? Why are we just sitting still? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight a little bit, okay? Um, sometimes in... In your walk with God, you'll find yourself just, you're like, Lord, what are you trying to show me? You're going through a season where maybe you're just sitting still and you don't understand. You, you're excited and you want to serve, okay? You want to serve, but you want to 
jump in God's way. There is a process. Do you think I just automatically got up here to preach God's word? I got saved in 1999. There was a long process, Pastor Tim, and I had to be obedient and I had to wait on God. I didn't choose to do this. He chose me and I feel like the least but I'm going to be obedient to him and I'm going to mind him, sis, because it's for the kingdom and it's to change lives and to change hearts. It's not about joy, okay? It's not about me. It's about him and it's about his children and it's about time is running out and we've got to get on board. We've got to understand that there is a bigger movement going on in the world around us today, okay? Satan is speaking loudly out there and he's being bold. And sometimes Christians, we just sit back and we're like, well, what do I do, Lord? We need to speak the word and we need to show up and we need to show out. And we need to let them know that God is a big God. He is a loving God, but he's getting tired of the sin in this world. He is getting tired of it. And it's time that we wake up and we start searching ourselves and we say, God, what do I need to do here, Lord? What am I doing that is hindering hindering me from hearing from heaven okay there's things that we can do that will block the holy spirit pastor tim you will be sitting in a church service sometimes and and do you ever just like you're sitting there and you begin to evaluate yourself i've been there and i see people getting blessed and shedding tears and they're so excited and they're just having a good time in the lord and i'm sitting there like this sometimes and god shows me I got something blocking him. There's some things in my life that, that I needed to lay down in order for God to move. Coming to church is not enough. It's not. It's not enough. We have to get rooted and grounded in his word. When I was preparing for this, I prepared weeks ago, but he just keeps giving me more and more and more. And I said, God... You're going to have to just help me tonight, and he does, because I've, I've wrote all these notes, but so far I haven't even hit them, because I'm going to let him speak through me tonight, because sometimes we try to do God's job for him, and it don't work like that. I just love him so much. Um, we need to understand something, though. There is no life. There's no movement in the church. Okay, there is nothing that can happen without the Holy Spirit and his anointing. We can come in here and we can look pretty and we can tidy up our ministry and we can look like we got it all together. But without the Holy Spirit, all you're doing is looking pretty and coming through those doors carrying a Bible. We have to get just, I don't really know the word, but we just need to be open to God, okay? Let him even see the ugliness, okay? Just pour it out to him and say, here I am, Lord. What, what needs to be changed? What can I do, God? And what I can't do, I know you'll do. And we need to start seeking him more. We do. We need to seek him so much more, especially in these last days. Um, I want to read something to you. Uh, John chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Jesus answered, and he said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You see, without his holy, sweet spirit, we can't do anything. We can't overcome addictions. Yeah, Christians have addictions. We can't overcome depression. We can't overcome anger. We can't overcome unforgiveness. We can't, we can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. Why would we need Jesus if we were just so perfect? You know, I get so frustrated, Pastor Tim, when I hear religious folks say, well, if they was really serving God, they wouldn't need that medicine. If they really had faith in God... They wouldn't be fighting that addiction. I rebuke that religiousness in the name of Jesus. Even the Pharisees said things like that. They said, look at me. Look how I pray before everyone at the gate. Look, look at me in the temple, how I pray. I use big words. You know what I say? 
Jesus, I need you right now, Lord. I'm falling apart and I'm a mess and I need your help. I need you to help me with this, God, right now. Lord, I can't do it on my own. I've done messed it up. I need you, Jesus. And he will show up every time, sis, because he's a good God. He's our father. When your child cries and says, I need you, what do we do? Do you say, well, I'm sorry. No, you say, what do you need, son or daughter? Because that's what a parent does. He's the best parent ever. He's God Almighty. He knows what he's doing. He gets it right the first time. I love him so much. He has just done so much for me. And you know, yes, does Joy have battles? Yes, she does. How do I handle those battles? On my knees and praising and lifting up his name. That's how I handle my battles. Do I always get it right? Absolutely not. But you know what the good thing about God is? He'll let you start over. He'll take that marred clay. He'll put you back on the potter's wheel. And he'll make you all over again. He's good. Hallelujah. There's nothing our God can't do. The world will cast you out and say they're done with you. But he says, no, you come on, child. I love you. And we're going to start all over. I'm going to teach you something through this. You're going to learn a lesson from this mistake. He's not just going to cast you down and forget about you. He's good. He loves us so much. Do we ever keep account of wrongdoings? Are we guilty of that sometimes? When someone hurts us, when someone hurts us or does something that, that really breaks our heart, you kind of get on edge and you're kind of like, well, I don't trust people now. We can't be like that. We don't keep account of wrongs. How many times do we forgive someone that hurts us? So that just means however many times it takes to forgive them. And that sometimes you do a lot of forgiving. But you know what? If we don't forgive those that hurt us, he won't forgive us. And there is nothing worth my soul. Nothing. I love him so much. He is a good father. He has done so much for me. He's teaching me. He's teaching me along the way, sis. He's showing me things. He's growing me up. As Christians, we can be immature. Let's just be honest. We can be babies sometimes. We can pout. I pout. Do I pout, honey? Yes, I do. I give in and I'll say, I'm sorry. But most of the time, I have to confess the fault. He'll say, I'm sorry. And we, like if we get in a little spat or something silly, but for the most part, we get along pretty good because Jesus is first in our marriage. He is. There was a time that he wasn't, and boy, did we mess it up. But he's a good God. He restores what's broken and tore up. He restores it, and he will bring back, well, I'll just say it like this. The love that he gives you is just awesome because you didn't realize how much love. You can't really love someone without the Holy Spirit. You can't. I just love him. I wrote this kind of small, so bear with me. So there's no love without the Holy Spirit. There's no love for his word. There's no conviction that leads to repentance. No love for the church except for what? In the Holy Spirit. John 15, 15 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. We cannot even confess the Lord Jesus Christ without his spirit. We cannot. We need his holy presence every day. Yes, I know it wasn't pretty. I messed that song up. But I feel what I sing because he changed my life, Sister Pam. He took a broken vessel. I was a mess one day. I messed it all up and he picked me up and he dusted me off and he changed my life. I want my cup to run over tonight, church. I want my saucer when I'm drinking it. 
I don't want it to just be at the rim. I want it to pour out and pour over until it spills over on my children and my grandchildren and those around me. Because it changes their life. I don't even have to say I'm a Christian or a child of God. My actions are going to show it. When I walk by them, they should be able to feel God's presence. That's how he wants us to be. Filled up and running over. Always. Do we have bad days? Like I said, yes, we do. But reevaluate yourself and think about it like this. All right. Lord, I started my day out this morning and I didn't even stop and pray. We have to make time to pray. We make time to make that pot of coffee in the morning. That coffee's not important. But prayer time with Him is very important. I'm brushing my teeth and talking to the Lord in the morning because I'm always in a hurry. Sometimes I sleep a little later than I should. But I speak to my Father every day throughout the day. When I'm at work, in between phone calls, I'm talking to Him. I talked to Him today and I said, God, fill my mouth tonight, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. When I went on my lunch break, I meditated and I spoke and I read the Word and I said, God, just help me tonight, Lord. Because this is not about me. This is about Him. I want it to help my brothers and sisters. I want it to help me. This is food for our hungry souls. This is a soul-filling station. When we go to the gas station, when we're running low on fuel, we get filled back up. I need this midweek service. Some people can make it just by coming on Sunday. Not me. I need Wednesday night. Wednesday nights are important. I need it because this just helps me get rejuvenated for the week. And it helps me from when I come in here on Sunday, I'm filled up. But I don't just wait and get it at church. You have to seek him while you're at home. While you're at the, you definitely need him at the grocery store now. Inflation's getting bad, isn't it? But God provides. I don't think there's any of us starving in here. God provides for his children. He's good. You know, um, this don't really even go with this tonight, but we just, we just lost our pet, little Macy. We had her for 15 years, and I love that little fur dog. She's like part of the family, and as I watched her, I knew it was her time, but I thought, God, she is a little companion that you gave us for 15 years. And, you know, he cared. God cared that it broke my heart. He cared that it hurt us. The whole family was affected because we love that little fur baby. Even her meanness. I loved her in her meanness because God gave her to us. But my point is this. He cares about what you care about. He does. What hurts you hurts him. And what's important to you is very important to our God. And I just thank him for what he does. You know, I just, I look at my life and there's some things I wished I would have done differently. Some things are blessings and some things are lessons, but it's always a blessing. He's brought many people in and out of our life and some was just for a season. But I've learned through everything, Pastor Tim, everything. And I have many faults, but he's helping me with them. And I'm seeking him more and more each and every day. And I ask him, God, just help me. Show me what I need to do in this situation. And we need to do that. We gotta, where we mess up, church, is we try to handle things on our own. And, you know, it could be how you were raised. You're, you're the one that always was the problem solver. But we got to learn to let go and let God. That's not just a saying. It's the truth. Let go and let God. Because he will fix it without any of the drama and the messes. We bring a lot of drama to the table. But he doesn't. He fixes it right the first time. I love him so much. All right. So remember again. 
Without the Holy Spirit, there's no movement. When you think about a boat that's out in the middle of the, the river, the lake, the ocean, um, a sailboat. I'm not real familiar with sailboats, but I know one thing that they have in common. If they don't have their sails up, they're not going to move, are they? We have to have our sails up. What does that mean, to have your sails up? To be ready to come in here and lay down the things that are bothering you. If you have to come straight in and hit the altar and pray and lay it down, that's what we need to do. Because it hinders. I never want to hinder the service, Pastor Tim. I never want to come in here and be so boggled down with what happened throughout the day that I come in here and God can't move and he can't work through me because I'm all about myself. That's how it is. If we come in here and, and we just continue to pout and huff and we're upset, we haven't let it go. And God can't move. The Holy Spirit can't move when sails aren't up and ready. Isn't that right? All right. So think about Acts in, in the book of Acts. What, what were they all doing in that upper room? What were they doing? They were ready, weren't they? They were ready to receive that holy fire, that Holy Spirit. Or did they say, oh, I'm not really feeling this. You know what the problem is? We worry about what it's going to look like. I used to be one of those because I flat out ugly cry. That's just me. When I cry, it's not pretty. Sometimes Chuck has to bring me many tissues because it starts running and it's not pretty. But you know what? It doesn't have to be. We need to quit making our ministry look so glamorous. It's not about that. God wants us to release and let go because that is where he's able to move is when we let go. Quit worrying about what other people think. Praise him. When I see some of you crying and praising the Lord and, and running around the church, it like falls on me. It's like that cup that's running over, and it falls on me. And I mean, you've seen what happens up here. When one gets started, it's just like boom, 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 all the way down. It's like a domino effect. That's how the Holy Spirit works. You know at ball games when you see people do the wave? That's what it's like. He wants us to be like that. He wants us to be free. What happens when you're caught up and overwhelmed by his presence? Well, for one, healing begins to happen. For another, conviction falls on people. And they start feeling the drawing of the Holy Spirit. I want my lost children to come up in here and be so drawn in that they have to run to the altar. I don't want them to have to wait till they get here, though. I want them to be uncomfortable around me. I want them to know that they have a praying mama, and I think they all know that. And their, and their daddy and me pray for them all the time. And you know what? God shows up, and he moves, and he touches our children and our loved ones. He's so good and so faithful. I just, I just thank him. All right. Um, so maybe your sales are up. You know, we talked about the sails being down, and then the wind can't get a hold and move. God can't move. But what if your sails are up, and you're still not going anywhere? What, what would be the cause of that? Okay. Well, God promises to give us his Holy Spirit. All we have to do is ask him. We have to put our sails up, and even if they're up, we got to quit relying on our own abilities. Right there's where it's at. If your sails are up and you still don't feel God's holy presence, you're relying on your own ability. You're not relying on him. Remember, if we truly are all about him, then we have to get ourselves out of the way, and that's hard to do. That doesn't mean you're a selfish person. That means that you're human. And we're just used to trying to take care of things, especially women, like mothers and mother hens. And we, we're like protective and we're like, well, I'll fix it. But sometimes God wants you to just step back, let them fall, 
and that way he can work on them and he can fix them because sometimes we enable them we do you got to learn to just let go and let God have them that doesn't mean you don't love your family or that friend that means that you do love them enough to let God clean them up and fix what's broken in their life all right so what if your boat is docked and you're just standing still you're sitting there and you're like I go to revival I go to church um, I come in here and and I put in a prayer request and I come to the altar I help pray for others do you pray for yourself we have to learn to pray for ourselves too we do we've got to pray for ourselves because we need strength you got to have the full armor of God on he he needs us to seek him for everything okay not just not just the little things not just don't call on him for the big things either and then when whenever you're walking along life's road and something big hits you we all know we run to God. Is that not what this world does when something bad happens and they run to God when tragedy hits and they're like, or they want to do this and they say, where was God when that happened? He was right there waiting for you to cry out to him. He's never left, but we shove him away. The world gets so used to shoving him away, they don't even recognize him when he shows up, Pastor Tim. Okay? We got to recognize who he is. And how do you do that? You got to spend a little time with him. If we don't spend time with him, we're not going to know who he is. We got to get in the word. He will show you who he is in his word. And I'm not talking about just a little devotion on your phone. I'm talking about you truly seek his face and you say, God, show me who you are, Lord. Show me your power. Show me your glory. Help me, Lord, to receive this so I can share it with others, Lord. Help change me. Change the things that aren't right in me, Lord. Help me to see that. You see? We have to, it begins here. Revival begins with us. A changed life. It begins right here. Got to get ourselves out of the way. And I'm talking about me too, church. So, um, I remember when me and Fred were dating and he would take me down to the um, lake and we would go look at like the boats down at the boat docks and there would be big, beautiful house boats and there would be all these boats, and we would be like, that would be nice to have one of them one day. But one thing I remember is some of those houseboats didn't even look like they'd ever been taken out on the water. They were beautiful. They were shiny, and they were just gorgeous. And I thought, hmm, you know, when you, when you think about that, why would that be? Because maybe the owner is afraid to get their boat banged up or scratched up. Or, or, you know, you could tell that boat hadn't endured any storms. But then you see the little dinghy boat over there. And it's beat up and it looks rough. And, and you see some fishermen step out of it. And you know that boat has been places. Okay? So, in your walk with Christ, don't be afraid to get in there and be exposed, just let him have his way. Like I said, if it's ugly, it's okay. He's going to make it pretty. He is because he has a way of doing that. He can take the ugliest situation and make it beautiful. Quit worrying about what people think. Joy was like that for so many years, and God's still working on that. I care what people think. But God said, you got to stop that. It doesn't matter what they think. It's what I see in you, child. That doesn't matter. Because we're people pleasers. We try to please people. I have found out since I've been working in youth ministry, it's been a blessing, but the battles sometimes are rough. Joy has dealt with the spirit of offense. I have, Pastor Tim. And I didn't handle it very well. Been serving God all them years, and I didn't handle it very well. My heart got broke, and I pouted, and I was mad at the world. And then the Holy Spirit said, all right, child, 
You've had your little pouting spell. It's time to get in your prayer closet, and it's time to ask me what's really going on here. And I realized it was the spirit of offense. What is it that Pastor Daniel says before anyone joins the church? He don't just say that to be saying it. You see, him and Pastor Tim have endured some storms. They're our shepherds, and they're here to guide us and help us to see. And we don't always listen to them, and we're not always going to like what they say either. In fact, sometimes you're like, oh, my gosh, he's really stepping on my toes right now. But that's a good thing. They don't know what, what we've been doing. They don't know what you do in your personal life unless you blast it all over Facebook. But the Holy Spirit shows them that it needs to be preached and it needs to be taught. And so we can't get mad at them for bringing the word because it's coming from the throne of grace. God is sending that word. And that's how we grow. We learn through and by the Holy Spirit. He teaches us. You know, he's a patient teacher, Pastor Tim. I remember when I used to homeschool the boys. I wasn't very patient when it came to algebra and math because I just didn't know how to do it myself very well. But he's patient. He will give us the time we need to learn from this lesson that we're going through, Pastor Tim. But then there comes a time when God says, that's enough. Have you ever told your child, that's enough. You need to straighten up right now and grow up a little bit and act your age. God needs to tell us that, don't he? Sometimes, but he loves us so much. He, he is the best parent ever, and he just wants what's good for us. And remember, when we're all about him, we're going to listen, and we're going to do what thus saith the word of God. All right, now, so we were talking about the boats being beautiful and some of them not even looking like they had ever been taken out. Um, God wants us to not be afraid of where the Holy Spirit's going to take us. Can I share something with you real quick? It was back during one of the empowerment conferences, and I've experienced his presence so strong before, but not this time. Something happened at that empowerment conference. I got taken to the ground. I don't even remember. And I was in a whole different realm, Pastor Tim. And I could hear chanting and I could hear God speaking to me. And as I laid there, and you know I didn't get hurt. I don't know how I, I fell or how I got down there or how I got back up. But his presence done something for me. And he showed me how powerful he really is. But I was ready to receive it. we got to quit being afraid of the Holy Spirit. we got to quit being afraid of where he's going to take us and what he's going to do. It's for a reason, church. Do we want to see people healed? Do we want to see people? Do you want to see limbs grow back out on arms that are missing? He's the same God. He's able to do all those things, okay? He's the same God. I stood up here and I got anointed for my brother Scott. Yes, my brother Scott is fighting cancer, but he's going to be my miracle. I'm claiming that. I claim nothing else but healing for him. God is healing him. Yes, he's going through treatments right now. He's going to the doctor, but he has never lost his faith, and he's speaking faith, and he's witnessing everywhere he goes. God is speaking to him and showing him things. He's drawing closer to God. He doesn't blame God for that. Look, these bodies, we take care of them the best that we can. But these bodies are flesh, church. You're not going to save this flesh, okay? But he can heal and he does heal. We just have to trust him. But maybe there's something in your life or, or our life that we are not listening to him. Our healing is being blocked because there is something lurking under the water. What is it? Do we have unforgiveness in our heart? Is there sin? Is there, is there something that we have not repented for? We really got to search ourselves so he can move, move this out of our life. And so we can move forward and we can continue, sis, because I don't want to go back to Egypt. Do you remember being in bondage? I'm not going back there anymore. 
He delivered me one day. I was a struggling parent and wife. And I think I've told this before, but I was just miserable. And I couldn't understand why. And my brother, the one that's fighting cancer, came to my door. Fred was at work, and he knocked on my door. And there I was, this, this mother with two young children, Austin and Caleb. And I was sitting there in my living room. And before he got there, I said, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. I was fighting depression. And I felt just so alone. And my brother came and knocked on my door and he said, I want to invite you to revival. And I went and I, I walked through those doors and I felt such love. The church that we attended, just I felt so much love. They didn't know me, but they were shining the love and light of Jesus. And I remember how God changed my life. And I don't know, I think it was, I went back that night and I couldn't hold back no more. My knuckles was just... I had clenched that bench to the point to where it's a wonder I didn't break something. And I let go, and I came up to that altar, and I let it all go. And I just remember saying, take it all away, God. And I, I knelt down there at that altar, and I said, take it all away, God. Take anything that has held me back all these years, take it away. All the, the bad things that happened in our life, he can take it away and fix it. But we have, to, we have to be patient in the process. Why is it that some people get their healing right now and some people have to go through a season to be healed? I'm not God. I can't answer that. But he knows what he's doing. He's faithful He's a just God, and he loves us so much. He wants what's best for us. He does. And even in our mess and our mistakes, he still loves us. He says, pick your cross up and come on. He doesn't say, you know what? You messed up too much. You just need to go on. He doesn't do that because he is God Almighty, and he loves us so much. Hallelujah. But think about it. There might be things in your life, some unforgiveness. You might think that you aren't holding a grudge. You might think that you have let these things go. But time will tell and the Holy Spirit will show you. Romans 8.28 says this, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Maybe he is swirling all around you and you're not hearing him and you're not feeling him because you have things that you need to release. And he will show you what they are. He shows us, Pastor Tim. Oh, he's a loving God. You know, the Bible says that he's my refuge and my strength. He is a high tower. When I feel unsafe, I can run to my father. And he picks me up and he takes me in his arms. It doesn't matter what I have on. doesn't matter what I look like. <laughs> like the other day when we were outside on that slide, I looked a little rough. <laughs> it doesn't matter because he doesn't look at the outside. He looks on the inside. Are we easily offended? Do we let little things really offend us when people say things? I want to say this because I've been guilty of this. You should not put yourself down. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're made in his image. Okay? We're all different colors. Our eyes are different. Our hair's different. Our body shape's different. God, don't look at that. It's what's in here. We can change things if we want to. But you know what? I want to change the spiritual. That's what I want to change. Because then when I change the spiritual, I'm going to hear him more. And I'm going to understand more. We should do our best to take care of our, of our body. We really should. But quit getting hung up on things like that. We need to listen to what God is saying to us. Um. When you think about the joy of the Lord, 
even when you're going through something and, and you're burdened down, maybe you're, you're dealing with something in your family and you're carrying a heavy burden, do you know you can still be strengthened because the joy of the Lord is your strength? Circumstances don't change that. But what is robbing you of your strength and your joy? Do you know it takes more muscles in your face to frown than it does to smile? <laughs> and yet some of us are like, my frown's not pretty. And when I smile, my eyes disappear. But you know what? I love to smile. Because when you, like if you smile, you just begin to feel better, don't you? He gave us our emotions and our emotions are, you know, they're a gift from God, but they can also, we can get confused, the battlefield of the mind, and we can be like, well, I just don't feel safe today. Have you ever felt that way or felt like, I've messed up too much? Look, their ministry looks so awesome. They're like going along their way, and it seems like everything is just good. But my ministry, woo, I have done messed up too many times. Quit comparing ourselves to others. He don't want us to do that. Where Brother Carlos is is exactly where he's supposed to be. And God's going to continue to grow him up. I'm so proud of him. God's going to continue to grow him in the Lord. God's got great things for him. But he also has great things for you too, sister. We are all his workmanship, okay? We're all the body of Christ. You know, Pastor Tim, you might be the arms, and I might have the feet. And Sister Gladys, we might need your, your brain through this. We all, like, there's things that she brings to the table. Husband and wife, they help one another. Okay? Could you imagine if everybody had the same gift? Wow. There's only one Pastor Tim. Hallelujah! Right? <laughs> And you'll hear Pastor Tim in the grocery store. I have heard him before. And I'm like, that's Pastor Tim. Because he's the same everywhere he goes. But my point is, we all have gifts that he's given us. We shouldn't want to look like someone else. We shouldn't want their calling. Trust me, you don't want other people's calling. Because you have to walk where they walked in order to get it. And it's tough. Okay? But I want to read this scripture too in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. The second part says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's so important, so important to make sure that we stay strengthened and that our joy, don't let things rob your joy. And I've been guilty of that. I had a sister tell me one day, she said, it's good to see you smile again. I didn't even realize I hadn't been smiling. And then I got to reevaluating myself. And I was in a battle, and I was letting it get the best of me, Pastor Tim. And I wasn't praying enough. And I, I, God showed me where I was going wrong, okay? He showed me why my sail was up, but I wasn't moving. I want him moving in my life. I want my cup running over. Me and my brother and sister and my mama used to sing a song. And it was, I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. I understand what that means now. There's more. There's more. I mean, he wants to do so much more in our life. We just got to let him. Hallelujah. He is just awesome. Can't you just say it with me? God, you are awesome. Amen. The enemy will try to use your own family. He will. He'll use your family. He'll use your children, your spouse. He'll use your church family. And sometimes they don't even realize they're being used of the enemy. You know, have you ever thought someone was mad at you because they didn't smile at you? And in your mind you're like, they're mad at me because we're human and we're always, you don't have to teach a baby to do wrong. 
a baby knows that, you know, when it, when it comes through the door, little Easton, he's into everything. Rachel said, yes, he is. Bible school, his little eyes was just lit up, and he come up here, and he was, like, so excited because you don't have to teach them to stay. You've got to teach them to stay out of it. You don't have to teach them to touch a stove. They know they'll go right to it. That's their Adam and Eve nature. Do you know that? We're born with an Adam and Eve nature, sinful nature. That little child doesn't understand what's hot or cold. We got to teach them, okay? So God teaches us, and we learn from one another. I need your testimony. I need to see you overcoming, because then whenever I go through it, I can say, hey, God was with my brother or sister through that. He's going to help me too, because he's a faithful God. He's no respecter of persons. What he done for one, he's going to do for others. That's how good our God is. All right, I'm almost done. So how do we know that we have, we are his? How do we know that we belong to him? Well, for one, you've asked him, but here is, here is a question, okay? How do we know we've passed from death unto life? Because we love our brothers and sisters. If we don't have love, then we don't know God because God is love, Okay, and we should want them to succeed. We shouldn't sit back and say, mm, I don't really care for them. I just would rather keep my distance. You're not going to be able to be in covenant with everyone. Like, you're not going to be able to go sit down and, and have dinner with everyone. But every person that you come in contact with, you should be able to see something good in them. And you should be able to encourage them and love them and pray for them and point them the right way. Too many times I've heard, it breaks my heart, but I've heard people talk about other people and they'll say things that's really hurtful if it would get back to that person. God don't want us backbiting and gossiping. He wants us to love one another because he loves us and he gave his son so that we could have life. And just remember this, Romans 8, 31 what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? No one can. They may try to come against you, but they're, they're not going to win. Because God, I'm on the winning side. What about you? I'm on the winning side tonight. I refuse to stay docked. I want my boat moving. I want it out there. I want to go out and I want to journey and I want my cup to run over so it spills over and that others will see it too and they'll catch a hold of it. It's just like the holy, the holy fire wind is so awesome. There's more. And I told God, I said, God, whatever you want for me, I'm ready. You better mean it. When I told him, Lord, I'm ready. He said, all right, child, <laughs> but we really have to mean it. We have to be ready. Get your sails up and be ready to receive what the Holy Spirit's going to do. And I'll leave you with this verse, John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. And because he overcome, we can too. So, so get your sails up and watch the Holy Spirit move. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Y'all can go and bring the prayer request down. Um, I just want to say a little something about that because it's a lot of stuff that stood out to me. One thing, your subject was powerful. Don't stay dark. Amen. Joy, you made me think about something because I was listening to you say that, and it, it's amazing because I thought about something. Most people have their boat tied off. Yes. See, but in order to launch out in the deep, <laughs> You got to untie the rope. Yes. And some of us been tied up so long, guess what? We won't even get untied. 
Sometimes we'll stay in that same places for years, never moving forward in the things of God. And we got to release that mindset huh? because God always thrusts us forward. Yes, he does. Huh? I thought about this, and I've been looking at this scripture. Um, when the man was in the tombs, Jesus gave them one commandment. He said, we're going to the other side. Amen. He didn't tell them what they was going to do because he already knew what he was going to do. <laughs> See, and you don't know that God is launching you out to rescue somebody yeah. because you got the love of Jesus in your heart. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And you are the one that he's chosen yes, amen. to go and speak a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge to that unsaved soul Hallelujah. that to bring them out of darkness. Thank you, Jesus. Am I talking right? Amen. I'm Talking telling you, around. sister, I love that word. That was Praise a great word. Lord. And Hallelujah. we thank God. Didn't y'all enjoy that word? Yes. My Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. 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 It was so beautiful. It Praise really was. The Lord. And we thank the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Continue to keep our brothers and sisters in prayer. That's on this prayer request, okay? Amen. We're going to remember those in prayer. Excuse me. Also, we remember Pamela Green, unspoken prayer request. Rodney Baker, pray for restoration and reconciliation, mending of hearts, and the love to return to his marriage. Yes, amen. Amen. We're going to definitely keep those in prayer. Yes, thank you, Lord. Daniel Pearson, pray for his co-worker. He was diagnosed with leukemia and is deteriorating. Had a 14-year-old. He's got a 14-year-old. Definitely going to keep that in prayer also. Amen. Also, Teresa Person, pray for her. She's having a lot of pain at night. Amen. Amen. Any other prayer requests? How many believe in the power Amen. of prayer? Thank Come you, on Jesus. here. Amen. Huh? So well, the Bible said we're two or three are gathered in the name, touching and agreeing on anything, right. that yes. he will be in our midst. And I saw a lot of hands fly up. Thank you, Lord. Huh. So we're going to believe God for healing for every one of these situations. Will you pray with us? Thank you, Lord. Father, we come now, God. And God, we give it all to you. For you truly are the chief physician, God. And Father, your word, by your stripes, we were healed, God. We're not waiting for healing, God. We're already moving in it right now because of what your word has spoken, God. You said healing is the children's bread, God. Yes, so we stand in healing, God. And God, we command those bodies to align with the will of God and the word of God, Lord. Because we're standing on your truth, God, and your word oh, is truth, you, God. We thank you for touching their bodies, God. Right now, as only you can, God, because you are the chief yes, position, you are, God. Lord. And you know all about it, God. Even when the man, God, told Jesus that his son was sick, Jesus sent him back home, God. And he asked the question, when did he get well? And it was when Jesus spoke the word, God. So I speak healing over every one of these situations, God. And we're counting it done, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Release your healing, God, from on high. Do it for your glory, God. And we, your people, will be so careful to give you the praise. All the honor and all the glory. For truly it's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. And all the church said. Amen. 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 Thank you to our online audience. And thank you all for coming out tonight. Tell someone about that word tonight. huh? Don't stay dark. Amen. Thrush out into the deep. Because the deep call it to the deep. Amen. We'll see you Sunday morning bright and early in this place for worship. You have a blessed night. And a safe journey home in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You are dismissed.